Okay. So we are live, um, and uh, today we are going to talk about uh, um, the trading view indicator for uh, uh, for the spiral power law. And uh, um, if you are in the chat and you are there, please uh, let me know. Say hi, and also let me know if you can hear me. Everything fine, etc. So it should be a live uh, chat, right? Yeah, live chat. Let me see. Yeah. Hello. Hello, Maudi. Okay, top chat. All chat. Yes. Okay, now I can see you. Um, all right. Thank you to come. Um, and so we are going to uh, focus mostly on this today because... Um, Otherwise, I get distracted and start to talk about, you know, how the universe came about, the Big Bang, you know, all this kind of stuff, like, you know, putting those, you know, tell us uh, why you invaded Ukraine. Sure. If you start, you know, from the glacial era. You know. Anyway, um, so the main idea, and these are uh, like uh, some recent developments, uh, because uh, I'm spending almost every day, all the day, thinking about this stuff. But uh, it's almost like it's really nice when you work on a problem and all these pieces come together. You know, it's like it's all exhausting, but it's one of the most amazing experiences. You know, it's really incredible. And so I think I think I got it. And there are many different things that we can still learn about Bitcoin, but uh, we are really on a very good path here. Uh, and so let me see if I can share this with you. Uh, window and this, this one, I think. Yes. Yeah, this one. Okay. Uh, can you see the, can you tell me on the chat if you see the slide? Do you see the slide? I think you should be able to see the slide, right? Yes, we do. Okay, great. Um, okay, so, and I can maybe make it large uh, presentation, slideshow from the beginning, okay? These are my usual slides, but uh, I added this graph today. So this is what we are going to discuss, right? So what I did, these are two different indicators. So the one on the top, is the indicator that right now, first of all, how do you get it, right? So if you are not uh, already a Patreon, uh, in a moment, I will, you know, in the end of a uh, seminar, I will give you the links, okay? And uh, also, if you come to my X, I will have them there, so you can click and go to... But right now, I structure it in this way, where uh, it's, it's very reasonable to access, because, you know, Actually, to be honest, I got contacted by, uh, I will not make the name, but I got contacted by some other groups that actually do this as their uh, main job. And some of these indicators, you know, people charge hundreds of dollars sometimes, okay? So it's just that I'm trying to make a living out of this uh, because I want to focus completely on my passion for Bitcoin and the help of the community. So I'm asking a little bit of support. So right now... You get an indicator, but also you support me. So, and it's really basic, um, even the basic uh, subscription to Patreon, you know, supporters, the, the basic level is $5. If you can afford it, there are other levels. So uh, it depends on, you know, your uh, uh, ability to support me, et cetera. So you can choose whatever. There are three different levels with different benefits, but everybody gets uh, the first indicator. Now for the second, I'm still working on it, and we will add it soon. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to charge an extra amount. Again, you know, I'm spending hours and hours every day. So if I'm asking you to spend another five dollars for the other indicator, I don't think it's uh, you know greedy for me. I'm trying to be very reasonable, uh, but uh, also because you know, if it was free, it, you know, sometimes people don't even appreciate stuff that is completely free, you know. They don't give value to them. So it's and there are trolls, etc. So it's a way of saying, 
you know, you, you value what I'm doing. I value uh, your time too. So we work together. But anyway, so right now you get the first indicator as uh, if you join Patreon, then you also get access uh, through Patreon to the community. We are all there discussing, knowing each other. So it's a nice thing to, you know, to be also part of it. You can reach me there. You can ask me any questions. I can help you, you know, uh, and we are going to do a lot of things in the future also together, you know, like um, maybe um, other sessions like these. I can, if you are interested in using Excel, we can explore that. But uh, what do we first graph those? And this is a slide because I have a lot of information, but then we can go to the live version so I can show you how it looks when you interact with it. Because, and if you are not familiar with TradingView, if you never used it before, I can also help you with that. Uh, you know, maybe we can have another video where I can show you step by step uh, how it works. But it's really nice. It's a, in fact, uh, we have a, a paid subscription where you get all, all kind of uh, benefits, and I have that subscription because it actually allows me to publish uh, scripts like this. But also, you get more more stuff, and uh, you know, I do trading uh, also, uh, so it's important for me to have uh, the paid version. But uh, the basic version should be free and let me know. Uh, so I think you get it free. But um, and this indicator, you can have it with a free version. So, you know, you get the benefit of a chart and the indicator. So, uh, and I will tell you in a moment uh, how the steps that you have to follow to get it. But first, I want to explain you a few things about the indicator, why it's interesting, how to use it, et cetera. And then in the end, we can go through the steps, how to get it, okay? And uh, the first one is, uh, sorry, the second one is not yet available, but uh, uh, almost finished. And I think it's great to have them together, right? So basically you open the first indicator, then uh, you go under indicators, you you will have an invite for uh, both of the indicators and you can open them in the same chart because when you combine them, I think we cracked the coin, you know? <laughs> uh not everything because you know there are still details maybe that we don't have yet but uh the general idea of a part of a cycle etc is there it's it's in a very incredible way with all the details okay so what what you see here so the, this is what i discuss all the time right this general path that bitcoin seems to follow it is basically this blue line and that blue line is the power law. What is different from some of the version that you have seen, I call this adaptive, because instead of uh, you know taking basically all the data points from you know, from the beginning to today basically, and then do the um, fitting right, the regression fitting, the code that does it uh, on a continuous basis. So it just basically take the recent data from the past and also it's a way of seeing how it performed in the past and you can see if you go all the way you know to the beginning it doesn't look perfect but uh, it becomes better and better with time but also it gets affected by local things like peaks etc and the usefulness of that and we and you can adjust it there are ways of adjusting how much data you want to come in to fit the uh, progression and uh, the usefulness of that is that then we can actually follow better like uh, the current behavior because it's going to still to follow power law, but uh, it's more weighted towards uh, recent events. So you can actually see if there is like, a, I will show you in a moment how amazing is that uh, some of these uh, lines and all these lines represent like deviations from the trend, okay? Uh, and, uh, and they are significant because they are based also on statistical properties of uh, the trend. So they are not just like random. Uh, they are, they have, you know, like this is a certain percentage of a standard deviation. This is another percentage of a standard deviation. So, so it's all meant to be mathematical. You know, there is nothing by chance here. And uh, one of the things I was surprised at myself, if it, even locally, when you zoom in, uh, these lines follow. It looks like Bitcoin stays there. Like, you know, you see how it stays here when it was, uh, we reached the bottom. We still went up, right, slowly according to this uh, trend line. 
and it stays there flat. It was almost like it was some kind of uh, resistance, right? So you can actually identify. So if you want to do a little bit of trading, you know, maybe DCA, it's useful to know, okay, Bitcoin will this kind of finding these as a support level, you know? Sorry, I called the resistance, I should say support. Sorry, because uh, it was like a kind of a bottom, so bottom. And and sometimes it becomes a resistance where, uh, you know, I reach this price and, uh, you know, it's, it seems difficult for a price to go up to the next level. And so it's really useful. And so this adaptive nature of the code allows it to actually follow a little bit better, not just the general trend, but also the local trend. So that is one innovation about this chart that you're not going to find anywhere else, okay? Because some people try to take the information, you know, because uh, uh, H.C. -E Berger did a very good job in popularizing this model. So other people kind of took the idea and they made like live charts of uh, these, but you will not find all these features, okay? So this is from from the guy that made this, right? So it's going to be a little bit better than anything else. Uh, but um, uh, so there is this uh, feature, the, the lines are also meaningful. They are not just uh, some random percentages, but are all based on statistical properties of Bitcoin. I added Alvings. And by the way, if you come to the Discord, we have a support channel. Sorry, I, we have a suggestion channel. So ask, make any wishful, any, wish list there, right? How I would like you to add this. It will be cool to add that. Uh, you're really contributing as a community to make me think about these things. And many of you have a right, very nice suggestion. So I have limited time because, you know, like I told you, I'm working this almost full time every day. Uh, but so I will try to, as we go, I will try to improve it and add more features, right? That uh, you think useful. But right now, basically, it has uh, uh, the lines, right? That are adaptive. Uh, we have uh, this. I have these triangles that represent past, so you can actually see. It's useful because you always want to see what Bitcoin did in the past, right? Because you want to compare. It's very regular. You want to compare what happened in the past with what is doing right now. So this chart allows you to do that. I also see how here I extend the lines to the future, and it's a, a user. Um, kind of control quantity, you can say, I don't think we can go too much, like, you know, 15 years in the future or something, but it allows us to look uh, maybe, you know, a few months in the future. Uh, so you can extend these lines and see, okay, it seems that we are going in this direction, you know? So it's actually a parameter that you can adjust, the projection towards the future. So again, this is a feature that uh, imitators, you know, the imitation... <laughs> The fake uh, ones don't have. Okay, so this is cool. Um, and what else? I put also these very fine lines. Uh, they should follow the price because again, I could put all these fine lines everywhere. I very yes, very useful because you know if you are in the daily bars, you can actually see where the bars are. But uh, there is a limit on how many of these lines you can have a gra in the graph. Uh, we have all Pine script is now. The it's nice because it's all interactive and it's live, but it has a lot of limitations. So what is one of the limitations? There's a certain number of lines that you can add and I think I reach the limit. So I'm making such way that it should follow the price, okay? So wherever we are, you're going to have these white, very fine lines. So that is another feature of a chart. Uh, and then, you know, it's a basically... You can use whatever you want because you know it allows you to choose the type of candlestick uh, you like. You know, I like Akinashi, you know, because I think are the more interesting type of bars. But you can choose any bar, of course, that you want. You can, you know, in theory, you could try different assets, right? Because there is nobody to stop you to kind of go gear and look how other assets look like. The chart here is all based on. Bitcoin, so the fitting probably is not going to look. It should be adaptive because it really takes the data. It doesn't. It does the calculation on the spot. You know, it doesn't like you know other imitations. We look at the numbers, right? The 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 trend that was calculated by other people offline, and then we use that, and it's a fixed number. Here is all 
adaptive and interactive and so it calculates the fitting on the spot for you you know i'm not doing anything here by hand it's all calculated automatically so this is the beauty of this chart that, you know as no new data comes in it's uh adjusting and some people criticize it say oh you're changing no you're not changing it, this is what we do in science all the time uh in fact there is an entire field is called bayesian probability you know, where uh, you actually update uh you know make an update of your uh, estimations because this is what we do also as human beings we get new information you will be really stupid if you didn't do that you know you get new information now the problem is if it changes so much where uh, you always adapt you know it's not predictive you know you are adaptive this is what a lot of indicators are they are reacting instead of prediction but you know if there is a little adjustment because you are you want also to take in account of you know where the price is moving at a particular time that is perfectly fine in fact it's a feature it's not a bug uh, so that is one of the things with this chart. So I was telling you, in theory, you can select, right? So when you go here on the corner and uh, pick up any type of asset and you could test it with other assets, see how the chart looks like. Uh, but uh, it's uh, ideally meant to be used with Bitcoin. And uh, uh, in on the Discord channel, I have actually instructions on what is uh, the DIA setup? So it's usually days. And then I like this. Uh, uh, when I go in the interactive chart, I will show you. But uh, there is something that is called uh, all history index, something like that. It basically goes all the way to the um, to the start of Bitcoin when we started to get data from exchanges. And it works best with that index because uh, it takes, I told you, right, it takes the entire history and then kind of bootstraps to the next step. So it's nice to have an entire history. It should work with other, you know, with other data sets, Coinbase, et cetera. But I suggest to use that uh, uh, with that data set, that one with the entire history of Bitcoin. Uh, and it's updated, you know, more consistently. So it should be fine in terms of the new data. Um, and I'm going to check the chat because I want to see if you guys have, in, have any questions on, uh, because I want to make this as interactive as possible. I will sign up for a Patreon. Saluti, Dottore. Ciao, Martin. Uh, thank you for your support. Uh, uh, yeah, I will give a link to the Patreon and they will explain you with steps, okay? So you can join. Uh, by the way, uh, the, these sessions also have these likes where uh, if you want to, and I'm sorry if I, uh, you know, kind of almost beg of supporting me here, supporting me there. But, you know, again, I'm trying to do this uh, as my full-time job. So there are ways for you to also support me during the um, video if you want to choose, you know, like one of these likes that uh, you can, I don't, I, I think there is a way of, you know, sending like $1 or $2 or whatever it is. Uh, but I will give instructions about the Patreon and then all the steps to actually join the community. Uh, yeah, we are going in the, in the uh, live chart in a moment. Uh, um, yeah, I, I, I'm, but I wanted first uh, to give a kind of an overview and explain the significance because uh, on the chart, I will not be able to show you uh, all these, uh, you know, like little labels that I put. Uh, I'm going eventually to add some kind of marker so you know what everything is in the chart but uh, the reason why i'm staying on this slide is because i put all this information so we are going back to these slides okay uh so um let's go back to the slide okay uh from the beginning Sorry, you know, I should have saved from this slide. Okay, so um, the other thing, right? So these are uh, the now some people ask uh, because they saw another chart where I actually add signals, you know, that say sell, buy, and so on. That is actually so in, in when you make these uh, indicators in uh, Pine uh, Pine script, that is uh, the language of uh, TradingView. 
you can choose different type of charts. So there are indicators, there are strategies. And so there is some more information in the strategy. So basically you have to give instructions on how to use this chart, right? To find the places where you should sell and buy. And this chart uh, is an indicator, so it's not a strategy. So I have also a strategy and I'm still working. I want to make sure that it works really good. Uh, it's really perfect when you go to the months. So instead of day, you choose actually month and then it almost perfectly finds these peaks and bottoms. But, you know, I think if you actually use it with these, the two components here, we are even probably more precise than these signals. But the, the usefulness of the signals is that, uh, you know, you can set up an alert. But I think we can also set up alerts in this chart. We don't really need that strategy. But, uh, you know, I will make it available when the time comes, you know, to, to have also the... Um, the signals, you know, buy, sell. Um, I just want to make sure uh, because it's such a critical thing. You know, this chart is more like, okay, this is where we are. This is where it looks like, you know, so it gives a lot of room to the user to make their own, uh, you know, uh, guesses and their own educated guesses, right? But based on the chart, uh, while, you know, if you see a signal close by, you know, I'm kind of almost taking responsibility about telling you that that is the right time. So I want to make sure that it really works. Uh, in the future, we will have even a app. So we're working on an automated app that we will do all these auto automatically without you really uh, thinking. And it's all going to be based on your trading style. So I want to just hold and want to do the CA. Uh, using the map, right? The idea of holding and using VCA is that, uh, you know, maybe you don't want to sell your Bitcoin, but maybe you can choose the time, the right time to buy, you know, so you can wait if you are in these uh, areas where we are close to the tops. Just wait, you know, just a little bit because the price is crashing. Wait, uh, you can do DCA the way down, you know, maybe it can be weighted according to where we are. You know, we give more weight uh, when we are close to the bottom. We are going to give less weight when we are close to the top. So you can use all the information in the chart, no matter what is your uh, uh, your trading or, you know, investing style. So if you say, I will never sell my Bitcoin. Well, then if you continue to buy because you are doing DCA, doing it in a clever way, you know, use the information from the chart. Uh, and uh, so the new, and you know, this again, even just this chart alone helps you with that, right? Because you can see what is the meaning of this chart, right? Uh, these are representing larger and larger deviations from the trend. So when we are below the trend, it's time to buy. So you can actually, and that will help you, you know, this is what the app is supposed to do. We have a like kind of a formula according where we are in these uh, bands on how much weight, right? So basically, hey, go 20% where I'm in the yellow, go 40% when we are orange, go, you know, 60% uh, on this other, when you arrive to that purple line, go full, right? You know, because it's the best time to do, do, to do DCA. So, and you can show, and I will have graph like that, what happened if you just do, you know, normal DCA versus doing it in this way. And you will see, your gains will be multiplied by a lot, you know, if you do it in that way. It's just a clever way. You can always save your money, right? Put it in a saving account and then use this approach, you know, to buy. But, you know, with knowing intimately what Bitcoin is doing. So you, you are going to maximize, you know, it's kind of a mini max type of game, right, that we're playing. And so you want to be as efficient as possible. And this guy, this map, it's telling you how to do all that. Uh, of course, it will be better to have an app that does it automatically because, you know, if we forget or, you know, we, we are sleeping and the app can do that. But we are not ready. It's a little bit complicated to do the, all this management, you know, and, but we are working hard. Hopefully, before the halving, we are going to have it because, you know, I want you guys to have it before the halving. So we are working hard to have it before the halving. But meanwhile... And even when you have the app, you can still use these because, you know, maybe you want to see what the app is doing. You want to double check, you know, the map. So, you know, you can 
kind of make sure that the app is doing what it's supposed to do. So you still want to have this um, chart. So the second component is this you know, second panel here, right? And this is literally, I came up with this like uh, in the last few days. And uh, what this is represent, right? So you probably saw my other graphs, right? And uh, I can try to find it uh, uh, and we can maybe later um, because I want to be more focused on the chart. But I made some graph, right? Where I represent the price of Bitcoin in what is called uh, polar coordinates. These are all things that for people that are not used to this type of things are kind of strange. But if you are a kind of a math physicist, we, you know what a polar coordinate chart is because we do that all the time, so, right? So we like, and these are things that sometimes are not shown in school until you're in graduate school. That is the fun part, right? Uh, if you are interested in these kind of things, because in, in normal school, we show you a bunch of boring things. But so these charts are useful because if you have something that is periodic, right, that basically behaves almost like a clock, it's nice to represent in something that looks like a clock, right? So basically, we do this transformation. Like the log log chart is a transformation, right? You're taking something that looks, you know, like uh, it's growing, and then you do one transformation with this taking the log on the y-axis, and then it looks like this, and then you take this final transformation, you know, the final form, you know, like a Pokemon or something, right? You know, the farm form of this creature that is Bitcoin, that is this, this final uh, form, and you do it in the log log chart, and it reveals how it really looks like, you know, this beautiful power law. And uh, so there are other types of transformation. But one of them is these co polar coordinates, right? So in the polar coordinates, basically, we do some math where uh, the radius, in this case, represents one quantity and the angle, right? Because in a clock, there are two main quantities that uh, determine how the clock behaves. One is the length of the end of the clock, and the other one is the angle, right? How the angle changes. And uh, uh, the angle, exactly like in the clock, because some people say, oh, it's really weird that you, at time it becomes an angle. It's not weird. It's exactly what happened when you read an analog clock, right? If you think about time, it's represented by the angle, right? So if you have a, you know, like a, when it's zero angle, you have a, uh, midnight or you know midday, and then uh, you know like a ninety degree angle. You have a uh, three o'clock, and uh, one hundred eighty degree is uh, six o'clock, and so on. Right. So you have the different hours represented by angles. So it's no weird idea at all. It's just that you are used to the clock, but you're not used to other things being represented in that way. We can do it with Bitcoin. So in this case, time is the angle and the radius here, you know, the length of a handle is the price. And if it was, you know, with gold, for example, I show in my X account how with gold it looks like a circle because basically that handle didn't really change much, right? It goes like in the last several years, it went from, you know, 1,800 to you know, 2,300, 2,500, but, you know, it stays in that range, so it looks like a circle. With Bitcoin, it doesn't look like a circle. It looks like a spiral because basically the radius becomes bigger and bigger and bigger, so it spirals out and out and out and becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. And it does it because, you know, if it was like a random process, it will intersect each, uh, it, itself, right? It goes here, but now it goes above it, the previous price and... It will look like a mess. And in fact, other assets look like a mess. But with Bitcoin, it looks beautiful. It look, because, you know, remember that handle grows like a power law. That is what we are saying here, right? That, uh, it follows in the linear chart a power law. And there is a name for such a spiral that grows exactly like a power law. And it's called a power law spiral. And by the way, that spiral appears everywhere in nature. Anytime you have something that uh, follows some kind of circular pattern, like, for example, the tree rings in, in trees, right? 
There are many papers, scientific papers, it's not just a, an analogy, it's actually science. There are many papers where uh, they come up with a formula of now the different plants, you know, in fact, it's almost a way of studying the property of a particular plant, you know, if you want to understand a forest or forest management. So we read a, recently a very nice article that uh, was discussing how these trees are formed and different plants have different rates, different ways that they grow, but they are all what are called power law spirals. It's very fascinating. And there are other processes, like, for example, I was reading another article about the horns of animals, you know, like rams have these horns that are kind of twisting around each other. They studied these horns and they found out that they follow also power law spirals. So it's something that has to do with something that grows in a very regular fashion with uh, some kind of constraints. So I think it's not just an analogy with Bitcoin. There's something about Bitcoin being both uh, a growing phenomena and also something that repeats in time. So the natural, any phenomena has its own natural uh, time or period, right? The time that it takes to do one complete revolution. In this case, you know what it is. It's four years, right? Because this is what happens with Bitcoin. Every four years, we're resolving. It are very crucial moments for Bitcoin. And so Bitcoin seems to have these four years regularities that are very, very precise. And so you can... What you can do, you can do some simple math and, you know, make a code and say, hey, it represents me the price where, uh, you know, it's the radius and time is the angle. And I want to make sure that every time I go around the circle, it's four years. So there are math ways of doing that. So every time it goes around the circle, it represents four years, the four-year cycle. When you do that, uh, you know, I show, in particular, if you average over time, so that is my contribution. I didn't come up with the idea of plotting Bitcoin on a circular chart. I wish I did. It's very genius. Like I said, it's nothing genius in terms of what they did in details because that is done all the time in different branches of science. But the idea of representing Bitcoin in that way is one of these things where it's so would say, why didn't you think about that before, right? Of course, it's a periodic, so it's, it will be perfect to do it in that way. But, you know, like the log-log plot, nobody thought about it to put it in a log-log plot until I came about, you know? So somebody needs to do it, and, you know, that per person should get the credit. My contribution is to plot on top of that the power law and show, you see, that thing that was looking nice, now it looks even nicer because I can tell you, if all law very precise law and is a uh, significant and has to do with growth, you know. So that is my contribution. But I think it's important and significant. But also in terms of understanding how Bitcoin behaves, because that spiral now gives a key, and this is where it is. So the problem in taking that spiral and making a graph in Trading View is that Trading View doesn't have a way. Of plotting these circles, okay? So you need to have some special software to do that, like I'm using MATLAB. Other people can use Python, doing different ways. But uh, TradingView doesn't because uh, everything is just linear. In fact, even doing, uh, you know, so it's actually what you see here in the first uh, panel is not like a log-log graph because there is no way of doing a log-log graph that I know because of, it's not a feature that uh, TradingView supports. So you have to stick with the curve graph, right? But it's still based on the power law because we're using all the math of the power law, but now we are representing it in this log linear chart. So actually that is another thing. When uh, you show this chart, uh, you need to, to make it look nice. You need to set up the log. So it's one of the options. you put the log of a price on the y-axis. But you cannot put the log of the x-axis because it doesn't allow you to do that. Uh, also, it doesn't allow you to do anything circular, right? It doesn't have that feature. Uh, it's a limitation because we are, most people think in a very linear terms about assets and about things you want to trade. But with Bitcoin, it's amazing to think in also in circular terms. So. I try to do the, be the next best thing. So what? So let me explain you. So basically, 
you know how you go around the circle, right, with your end. So I can take this end and I can project it on the uh, Y axis and on the X axis, right? So imagine like a shadow. So you, you have bright light here, you have a, your little endo, and then you are projecting it on the Y axis, right? So you get basically a shadow. And there are nice animations online if you look at... Uh, circle sine wave something like that and and basically what you see that uh, the length of this shadow it becomes like a sine wave so sine waves and circles are related to each other right so a sine wave is basically a linear way of showing uh the behavior of a circle right and you can do it with the sine you know with the y-axis of the x-axis it's it's basically the same they are shifted by 90 degrees uh, and really, you need to combine, right, it's basically like a Pythagorean theorem if you want the radius. If you have X and Y, the projection, and you want to get the radius, you then use the Pythagorean theorem, and, you, and that gives you back the radius. But it's a way of making a compromise and transforming something that is circular into something that is linear. So you look at the shadow, and uh, it's still useful. Now... Why it's only positive, right? When we have a wave, when we have a sine wave, you have both positive and negative. The problem with that is, you know, if you I could have kept it negative, oh, I could have kept it negative, but then people will get confused because what does it mean a negative price, right? Because I re remember here the amplitude of this wave represents the price, the projection of a price on on the y-axis, and so we people will get confused. Also. If you are on a phone, you can rotate your uh, your uh, phone and look at the negative way like this, upside down, because basically you are like following around the circle, right? So imagine you should turn to your head and go around the circle. So you know, again, it will if you are on a desktop, that is impossible and and it's uncomfortable. So I basically took what is called the absolute value and I make the negative also positive. But then instead of looking like a sun waves, it looks like these bumps, right? Like one bump, so for another. But it's okay because, first of all, you can see here this is the price. It looks upside down instead of looking, uh, you know, downwards, uh, and um, and it's still very useful because now you can see all the components, right? So basically, things are alternating. So uh, you can see here how the top uh, of the spiral, right? So the red is the spiral. Like right? sometimes I also show the full model that is supposed to follow the tops and i'm going to add it uh didn't have time it's a basically a simple model like a straight line so what you and maybe i should also color code it where uh, it's consistent so you can choose any color you want anyway right and you can choose the colors you like but uh, maybe i should use as a default the same colors that are here i could even put you know i could even put bands i could even put even bands here but i don't know if it becomes too clutter but you guys can give me feedback about that, and we can try different things. But um, um, so here is the spiral that is basically like if I take this straight line and I make it twist around the clock, right? It becomes this beautiful spiral. And you are seeing here in its projection on the y axis. So it looks kind of a sine wave, but then it took the positive part. So now it looks like bumps. Uh, so this is a positive, negative, positive, negative, and so on. So it's different hours, right? So I love this because you know what I will do next? Uh, I will make a clock. And in fact, uh, I can make it live online, and I will make the clock where we are, right? So what is the time? of What is Bitcoin time? It's so cool. You know, we can say, hey, it's uh, 6.25 right now because we can calculate them intermediate time, right? We can tell where we are on the clock, and so you know, the, and uh, and actually, you know, according to where you are, you, you can expect different things about the coin behavior, and so, but you know, this critical time, like zero, three, six, nine, they correspond to very precise places on the coin. And look, follow with me. Tell me if I'm seeing things or if it's really what I'm seeing here. Yeah. And by the way, I'm showing two cycles. But I did also the previous one, and when we go live, uh, you know, with the live chart, you will be able to see that uh, I'm not kidding. It's also true on the previous cycle. Uh, so it's really working for all the cycles so far. Let's see if it works for the next one, okay? So look at this. 
zero o'clock, right? Midnight or midday, whatever. It's not like really at 12 o'clock because basically it's not 24 hours. It's like 12, but it's still a good way of, uh, you know, like positions, you know, when you want to say, hey, there is a, the enemy is a three o'clock, five o'clock, right? Um, so um, it's basically a way of indicating different places around the, the circular path. It's not circular, it's a spiral, right? You see how these peaks are, it's not super clear, but you can see, right? They are becoming bigger and bigger because the price is growing. Um, so look at this. Midnight, look, was not that the peak? Tell me if yes or no, maybe in ch the chat, is that the peak or no? It's a peak, right? Not perfectly, maybe, but very, very close. And, be, and, be, and you know what is the beauty of this? It's not reactive. It's not lagging the indicator. Most indicators are lagging. That means there is something that happens, and then the indicator responds because maybe it's an average or something. Okay, of course, it's going to follow. Like uh, the other day, I was arguing with somebody. They showed me some kind of other, other cyclic, cyclic uh, pattern with somebody. First of all, you know, of course, he's going to follow some cyclic pattern. But, you know, this guy was plotting something in his head and he's all reactive because basically he was taking averages, right? And so, of course, he's going to curve once the price uh, is reaching the peak and is going down. If you have a lagging indicator after the peak, it will follow. But, you know, after. This one is not after. This one is predictive because if you are in a circle... You know, I, di I did work with this before. Like I was, I have a patent that uh, creates pulses to improve your brain waves during sleep. And so I'm actually very familiar with this. This is what I have done all my life. I studied power laws and I studied waves, you know, that are very useful in trying to understand Bitcoin. Our waves are predictive because, you know, you know when you are close to the peak. In fact, you can even tell if you know the hours, right? I am... You know, five minutes from zero, you know, I know it is going to take this amount of time. So it's predictive. You know when to expect that damn peak. It's predictive. That is amazing. You know, in a, any type of, you know, time, you know, price prediction, if you can actually anticipate what something is doing, it, it, it's unheard of, unheard of, okay? So we can do it here. Look, you know, it found the peak. We can tell when we are close because of the place where we are on the clock. And we can do the same thing with the bottom. Look at the bottom. This was the bottom. Okay. This was what? Like, okay, you can argue, okay, maybe it was a little bit before. The, right. You know, it's difficult to tell. It's basically kind of the bottom, right? It's the fucking, sorry if I use a bad word. <laughs> it's the bottom. You know, it's crazy. This is the bottom, this cusp. Okay. And also, if you think about a circle, what that means, we are very... So these are the other thing. Like, there are all kinds of different understandings coming from this chart. Like, for example, when you're traveling around the sine waves, there are different times to spend in different places with sine wave. Because you see how here you go very, very fast. It's true because, you know, we are going down fast, right? When, when we have this uh, bear market, the price almost like drops like a rock, right? And this is represented by the fat that we are going, moving very, very fast along the sine wave, right? It's very steep. And then finally we reach the bottom that is indicated by three o'clock perfectly. And then what is this other one, this other time? Remember this now it will be a negative part of the wave, right? So it looks like this one, but it's really, you think about in terms of a full cycle, right? So it's not zero, it's six. And six, it, initially I thought, it would be cool if this was the bottom because then you know, I could say this is the top, this is the bottom. The bottom is really the cusp or, you know, the transition here, you know, when you go from positive to negative part of the waves. But now I know what that six o'clock means. So I thought about it and I think I'm it's still kind of an interpretation, but I think I have interpretation is right. right? Follow me along and let me know if you agree. It's basically, see, here we have a bear market and, they, and the, oh, it doesn't look obvious, but basically they are very close. You know, right? This triangle represents the halving. We are very close to the halving. We are anticipating, you know, what is going to happen in the halving. And so basically we are leaving, and these are represented by the dynamic of how the price works. We are leaving behind the bear market, right? And even if it goes up and down, etc. 
we are still kind of in that sentiment that is still the bear market. And so these are represents a transition. We are going from the bear to the bull market. And then finally, you know, price are, you know, the Israel thing, uh, things are happening and what happens? So finally, the price goes above a trend line. And this is when the real bull market happens. So you can call it this kind of, you know, pre-bull market or the beginning of a bull market. This You can call it friends bull market or whatever. Right? But it's a phase change. You see how everything starts to go very fast and very crazy and everything is happening all of a sudden. You know, here, if we did this, you know, it will be here somewhere in the previous cycle. And again, we can look in the real chart when I finish explaining all this. And it's even, it was even crazier there. Hopefully this year will be like this, you know, like in 2018. Uh, but even, you know, in the previous cycle it was still crazy, right? So this what this cusp represents. So these represents the bottom. These represents the transition from bear to bull. And these from little bull to huge, big, crazy bull, okay? And then again, top, right? So the top was here, according to the clock, okay? And so, you know, pretty, pretty good, damn good. And it's consistent with the model, right? By the way, I didn't make this adaptive yet. It's just like fixed times, but I can make it adaptive. So it can actually kind of follow better the pattern of a price. So we can actually get even more clo uh, closer to the real peak because that will be next step. I'm going to make it. So it will kind of squeeze and stretch a little bit these uh, waves to make it uh, in fact, uh, the full model, you know, what is what you want to use? You want to use the full model. The full model should be able to actually fall even more closely. So it will be another curve here that will fall even more closely the top. But you see, you know, you can start to see the pattern very clearly. And what, look at this, look at this, the bottom, right? The three o'clock was the bottom, right? So if you bought it, you will got, well, I've got $16,000 uh, BTC. And now where we are right now, so it looks, ex again, it's a, like confirmation because it does feel that we left the bear market behind just in a few few weeks ago. And this is where we are right now, right? 6 of 5, 6 15. We, when we make the clock of it, they say I will make, we can tell exactly where we are, what is the exact time. Uh, and you see, it's, yeah, it's here when there is this transition from being in the bear market to actually the beginning of the bull. Then eventually we are going to go down over the way here. We will have another cusp at three o'clock. And sorry, nine o'clock, not three o'clock, nine o'clock, right? Because we are moving forward. So nine o'clock and beta nine o'clock will represent when we are going over the trend line and we are really in the frenzy, crazy bull market. And then we can tell the top, etc. Are you impressed? I am impressed. What do you think? Does it look makes does it make sense? Do you have any questions so far? It the scale is log. The scale here is log. It's already log. It's already I'm taking the log of the radius. Do you have any question? Anybody has any questions so far? Does does uh, does it make sense to you all this? Yes, no. Okay, good. Uh, so it's okay, good. And you can let me know. I will try to see if I can put like little labels, you know, in the trading view that tell the hour. Um, and uh, we can put other markets. Maybe we can even use color coding because we want to distinguish, you know, when we are in one of the bumps that is, uh, you know, between zero and three and the other one where we are between three and nine, you know, so I, I will try to make it improve it, you know, the scale on the bottom indicates, yeah, it's already in log. Yes. Because you can see here, right. You see how it's two, four, these are actually the exponents of so four. What four means is 10 to the four, six, seven, but basically it's like 52,000, right. If you take 10 to the 4.67, you get, uh, 50 to set because you know 10 to the 5 is 100,000 10 to the 4 is um you know 10,000 so 10 to the 4.67 is something in the middle that is 52 so this is why you have these weird numbers i don't think it's in, 
it's essential to understand this what these numbers are right just uh that you're going from you know zero to a maximum and uh and there are these cycles you really don't understand if you want to know what the price is you use the first chart right the first chart is all in dollars so, so that gives you a price and uh, this one it just gives you basically the time you know where you are on the clock yeah no problem my pleasure yeah yeah we can color code it and we can make it clear and you can give me the feedback we can work together on this chart I didn't write it explicitly, right? In my equation, there is no anything like, for example, S2F, right? This uh, stock to flow model. In the formula for that model, the halving is explicitly part of that formula. Basically, what happens every time the halving goes down by a factor of two. So, this is how he, he in the S2F works, he found. Another power law, people don't realize that actually there was a, a power law formula there in S2F. The, the power law, what uh, Plan B claims, that he saw a power law between stock to flow and price. This is how it starts. If, if you go to his article, it shows you there is this power law that I found. I found power laws you know, from 2012. I was surprise because they did power laws of price uh, sorry power laws of addresses power law of transactions i didn't think about stock to flow it's a very nice interesting concept but i think it's wrong in how the market responds to these changes in stock to flow it's somewhere there it's part of a story but how he says it happens is not correct that is my point and uh, sooner we're going to have actually a debate a public debate and we are going to make our own arguments and see but by the way the final judge will be reality because after this cycle we will see which model is really right because uh, uh, this model is already inconsistent from my point of view but you cannot completely exclude it by the time because his prediction is basically he cannot escape this prediction because that's what that model says, right? And he even adjusted because if you go back, last year, the last cycle, it was supposed to be 100,000. And then the former, basically, this is what I was trying to explain. He finds a power law between stock, uh, stock to flow and price. And that power law, if I remember well, it's like 3.5 or something like that, right? The exponent, right? Remember, these exponents are very important, the power laws. And then he... Um, he see, you know, his, his idea is, well, if a, there is a change in the flow, so it goes down by two, you are dividing by the flow. So that means the stock to flow goes up by a factor of two. And because of this power, all of a sudden, the two becomes 10. <laughs> this is how it works. You know, this is how the math works. But you see all that idea that, yeah, there is a power law, but the change Will be the so you were responding that way. It's his assumption that is he adds. It's a it's an assumption like when you do science is what you do. You make these assumptions, but I think the the bear of Bitcoin doesn't support that. It didn't go up like he thought it went up, and they were not talking about you know small little corrections. You know it was like a big factor because if you notice right, he has these plateaus. The price never reached that plateau. And he was supposed to go above that plateau, and he never reached that plateau. Now, he, you know, he's showing some time the graph. Now, I see, oh, we're going to the plateau. Well, we should have been there last cycle, not this cycle. And then, you know, if you follow him, and you think he's correct, his next prediction is that uh, Bitcoin, if he was coherent, it should be one million. But you know, he adjusted the model a little bit. And now, you know, he brought down by a factor of two. So it's still 500,000. <laughs> you know, it's going to be 500,000. Next cycle is going to be 5 million, you know, one Bitcoin, 5 million. I, I, it doesn't make any sense to me. You know, it doesn't make any sense. So, um, and, but, you know, to answer your question, is Alvin including in the model? Is not included, like in S2F, it is included because this is what they say. This happens, this is what will happen to the price. In my case, I'm not including it uh, directly 
it's included in this uh, spiral because I made it in such way, and that is a little bit. Uh, uh, it's it's a little bit uh, artificial because it would be nice if I had some theory that says, oh, be, you know, something more profound. It's simply because somehow, you know, uh, the halving affects the price, right? And so it creates this irregularity. It's almost like, think about when you're pushing a child, because I like to think everything in things of physics, right? You're, there is a swing and you're pushing the child and you're doing it every second or every 10 seconds, right? The peri period of a pendulum will be affected by you giving these pushes, you know, what else? Uh, so how fast the period of, you know, the pendulum oscillates, etc., will depend on you. We call it forced, forced uh, motion, you know, we force uh, uh, impulses, right? So uh, dri drive, drive, force driven motion, you know, there are different terminology for this kind of thing. So you're pushing the system in a very regular fashion with uh, timed pushes. And so the system will respond to that regularity of your acting on the system. Same thing here, you know, because uh, there are these alvings, so indirectly they affect the periodicity of our model. So this is why we say when I made this spiral, I, ma I made such way that, uh, you know, it becomes a full circle every time four years are passed. That is what I impose on the model. But it's natural because it looks like that is what the con is doing. They're responding to this for. So it, it's not included directly, but indirectly it is, you know, to answer your question. So it's there because otherwise, how come he was going to follow this precise? What I'm surprised is that we can find all these regularities. We can get the bottoms. We can get these, these transitions. You know, this is a new thing. I never saw this where somebody can tell you, hey, look, you know, we're transitioning. We are going from this to that, you know, and it does it in this very regular fashion. That is what is new about this chart. And I think it's a very important uh, contribution. And not just that. Now we have a clock and we know that all these positions are meaningful because when you are in this region, right, between zero and three, also means that things are going to happen very fast. So if you want to do some DCA, etc., you have to react pretty quickly because things are moving fast, right? When you're calculating the velocity, these are also another physics things. If you calculate the velocity of a sine wave, it's not going to be constant. You know, it's going to change according to where you do the calculation. So when you are in places like this, you can see with your own eyes, right? Things are moving very fast. So according to the time, we can tell what is the behavior of Bitcoin. So it's something that, again, I think is completely new. Nobody ever thought about this. This is my contribution, but I'm telling you the time matters, you know, but we can calculate even the velocity. We can say, okay, this is Bitcoin velocity. We can call it Bitcoin velocity. And so the velocity, it will be different at different places because we can calculate the velocity of a sine wave uh, and we can even calculate the acceleration. It's like really physics, you know, it's, it's really cool, you know, because this is one of the things that as a student, I even undergraduate students is one of the first things of it. Uh, it's a toy model that we look at the springs because springs oscillate and everything that oscillates is also periodic, you know, so we do the sine waves and then you can calculate the position of a spring, the velocity of a spring, the acceleration, you know, it's all, uh, it's a toy model that we use because it's a very good thing to understand anything that uh, oscillates like waves uh, or anything periodic, you know, planets going around uh, the sun. So we like in physics, like this little toy model because we are simple, we can understand, we can write the equations, but then when you go to more complicated things, it's not that different, you know, there are additions and complications, but the toy model is still a good representation. So this is like a toy model for Bitcoin. But, you know, if we do all these things, like, you know, we can represent maybe in another panel, you know, the velocity and the acceleration, you know, and it will tell all kinds of different interesting things about, uh, hey, crypto girly, um, will, uh, Rachel... Scorpion Francis, John Odo, named for 160. Hey, guys. Hey, everybody. Thank you to come. So it's really cool, you know, and useful, very useful, because it can help us in guiding our uh, investing with Bitcoin. You know, it's really cool. Yeah, even energy. We could even calculate energy, because anytime you have something that moves, it has kinetic energy, and maybe there is even an equivalent of... Uh, uh, 
potential energy, right? And we can calculate all these things. It's, I'm writing a book. It's called The Physics of Bitcoin. Don't tell anybody. And now it's public. But, you know, don't copy my idea. I'm, I'm writing the book, Physics of Bitcoin. And uh, hopefully it will come out soon. And you will have all these ideas together because it's really, really cool. You know, cool stuff. All right. Do you want to see, do you, first of all, anybody have any questions? Okay. So, uh, let me see. Somebody already asking certain things. And I'm going to answer your question. Then next, we go to the live chart so we can interact with it and I can show you how it works. And then uh, maybe we can conclude with uh, how to get involved. And please come to the Discord because you will help me to make the chart better. So you can tell me what we can add, what uh, we can do, you know, different things. Uh, but let me read this question with you. What does this model mean for other cycle theories for CR cycle, left translated cycle? It's, you know, of course, uh, you know, when there is something like this, other people have noticed these things. I am not the first one saying there are cycles and irregularity. I was discussing before, I think this is different from other people because most of the other things, it's like, for example, look, I'm not trying to put down other people, right? Because everybody's contributing, everybody's trying to do the best. They're excited about Bitcoin. So I'm not going, I'm going to be as kind as possible. But at the same time, I want to make a point. So there is this guy, I think it's called the Pi Cycle Map or something like that, right? And in one end, he's doing, he's trying to point out there are these regularity in the price of Bitcoin. But really, all what he does, he has at least basically two moving averages. And I have traded enough that moving averages are useful, but I hate them with a passion at the same time. Because really, they, don't, they cannot be used for you know, trading, because they are always lagging. It's a lagging indicator. They react and they don't predict anything. They react to something. So, of course, if there is a top and you have a, you know, long average, you know, over a long time, it will take longer to react. And then you have this faster one and it will react more fast. And, of course, they meet somewhere, right? And it's going to be somewhere after the peak. So it's a react. But, you know, he could have done that. It could have been nice. Say, hey, look, you know, it looks like these two numbers. I think he used like 300 something and 100 and 111 days or something. They are useful. You know, it, it doesn't matter. It can be 350, it can be 360. It, you know, they are useful because they seem to kind of, we don't get the top, but we can tell, you know, that we kind of are after the top. You know, it could have been a good contribution. But then he goes up and say, hey, look at this. If I divide 350 by 111, I get pi. These things make me crazy because it's bullshit. Let's call it what it is, right? In Italiano, una stronzata gigantesca, like it means a big pile of shit, gigantic one, right? Stronzata gigantesca. Why? Because it's random, you know, it's like you have chosen these two numbers, so you can tell people it has to do with pies, with pi cycle indicator, right? It's stupid. It's numerology, what is called numerology, right? Basically, you are making up some stuff. It seemed to the average person meaningful, but it's not. So, you know, maybe he didn't realize, maybe it's naive, you know, and let's be nice and think he was naive, thinking there is meaning, but, you know, it could also be something more, you know, worse, like uh, he's trying to tell people there is some meaning when there is not, you know. But this doesn't have anything to do with pi. Nothing. This has to do with pi because it's really based on the behavior of Bitcoin being a spiral. And it follows this power law very closely. And yes, I kind of cheated a little bit by introducing the... Um, you know, this regularity in the cycle. But you know what? I could have also done other more sophisticated where, where uh, the, it's, in fact, I will do when I, when I do the adaptive form, where the angle is simply calculated by the what Bitcoin is doing. And so there is something that is called, for example, this is what I did. Uh, I told you about this patent that I have about enhancing brain waves during sleep. And what they did there was exactly that. There is a tool called a phase lock loop, right? Basically, you have like a master clock and then you have a process and then you follow along 
and adjust a little bit because I had to basically to uh, I had to follow these waves that were irregular, you know, because brain waves during sleep they are kind of around one second oscillations, but one is 1.5, one is 1.2, so you need to adapt to them, you know. And so we can do the same thing here. So there is no trick where uh, I'm saying, oh, I'm, I'm introducing this periodicity is going to follow and adapt to the real periodicity because, you know, maybe a cycle is slightly longer than the other, you know, maybe there is block time instead of natural time. So that method is what I want to do. This is the second chart. I will use this face lock loop that will actually adapt to the real cycle, to the ongoing cycle. And we can still make prediction because, you know, it's going to show what is happening next because we basically, it's like what has done so far, you know? So it's, I'm trying to do as math and physics and science as possible, you know, with, I'm very aware, you know, believe me, you know, there are people that on these, for example, yesterday was, you know, like, oh, I need to, like my girlfriend say, come on, come to sleep. And, you know, no, I need to fight people on the internet. And that was, I'm stupid because I'm a little child sometimes like that, you know, I'm going to argue with people online, etc. But I'm also trying to, you know, respond to these things where people say, oh, you just did this regression line you know, because I'm not doing just a regression line. I'm doing so much, much more. I'm trying to use science and trying. And you can see these things will not happen like they are happening if there was no real substance there. And like I told you, you know, there are real scientists, other scientists that actually publish paper on power laws on Bitcoin because everybody's seeing these power laws. You know, I need to publish also my paper, but, you know, I'm going to do that. But, you know, it's real science, you know, as much as I can do. There are real science regularity. And other people have observed these things, but there is also a lot of charlatans. And so I don't want to call this Philip Swift. I don't know him. But when I read that thing about, you know, I, you know, I used to be a physics uh, professor. I was teaching in college. And I don't know what happens to people. <laughs> but I don't know if it, that happens in geology, in biology, maybe. But there are a lot of people like, you know, like a car sales person or maybe a mechanic, you know, like a car mechanic. And one day he wake up and he decides that he wants to show that Einstein was wrong, you know. And then it's a, like a re, like these crackpots, right? You know, crackpots. So these crackpots make a job like they're really like, I don't know if it is a mental illness or something. And then all of a sudden they want to write this long book you know or article and they contact you and send you like probably they do it without every physical professor in, in the world the united states and they send you these things that you get on, on in uh, in the mail and you open it and i had like a pile of these things and it was so funny because you know i was reading these bullshit theories about people you know people wanted to discuss with you why they think einstein was wrong when they have no, no basic knowledge of math or anything. So I saw these kind of things. You know, I'm dividing this number by that and get pi. It's bullshit. You know, there is no really reason why you want to use this number versus the other number to get pi. There is pi doesn't come out from that number. It's just artificial. So this is why be careful. You know, there are different models. And yes, they kind of point in the same direction. But also there are a lot of people that do kind of random stuff and make claims this is not there is no it's it's all there you know uh, yeah sometimes you just have to let them say whatever they say who cares but other times i don't know i like i argue with them i show them how ridiculous we are also because you know, maybe they're thinking it's like some other people are thinking that way. So maybe addressing some of these issues and explaining, you know, look, we are not taking regression lines. We are not drawing some line by end. We understand the limits. You know, everything needs to be taken. You know, like, you know, how I have this, li this slide. I don't know if I ever show you this, but uh, I'm clicking on the screen. So I should click on the slide. No, I don't know. Let's see if I can show you. I you know I have this like a funny meme 
on the on the slides. I don't know if I find it. Maybe the totality. But anyway, so there is a, a guy that has a shirt, right? They say, I went to a physics conference and all what they got was a lousy power law. And that is an internal joke because, you know, we do these power laws all the time in physics. And I scratch it, physics conference, and I put Bitcoin, you know, because this is what I'm saying. I'm going to the next Bitcoin conference and I'm going to tell everybody, maybe I'm going to wear the T-shirt and I'm going to tell everybody about the, big, the power law in Bitcoin. But it's a joke and I'm making fun of myself. But at the same time, you know, it tells a real truth here, you know, that there is something going on here that let's take it with a grain of salt or two. But at the same time, you know, it's a very useful understanding of what Bitcoin is doing. And it's not just prediction of price. It's an entire philosophy about understanding time, understanding the evolution, the growth that is not an asset like anything else. There has not been anything like this before. And probably after, you know, it's amazing. It's something that the news should talk about, but they will never. So we talk about. And it's important for Bitcoin to know, Bitcoiners to know. Caspa, uh, guys, let's talk about anything else. Uh, another talk, right? We can have another talk and maybe we can compare different coins. I don't want to get distracted and talk about other coins. Some people don't even like it because they want all be focused on Bitcoin. So let's have another episode where we say comparing other coins. So if people are not interested in other coins, they don't come. Or, and, but the people that are interested, they can come. So let's leave a question of co other coins for another time. Uh, all right. So these are also the other questions that always they ask me. So let me address for a, a moment before we do, go uh, to the live chart. So Nico, yeah, I hope I pronounce well your name, uh, with upside down K. Um, are fundamental changes to BTC like the ETF just a natural response to the increase in price? Yes. So you see, I'm not telling you you need to think in this way, right? But I think if you start to believe, right? And it's not just believe, it's kind of like you became like a, you know, an expert in this way of thinking using the power law the way that you will answer a question like that is yes at every stage of a growth of bitcoin bitcoin will attract certain things so it's a feedback loop bitcoin does something something the world responds to bitcoin that makes bitcoin do the next move and so on right it's a feedback loop because and that you see the, what the power law tell us because there are so many things that we can learn from the power law. It's not just like a nice line. It tells us that this progression of Bitcoin has been regular. Because what that straight line, what a straight line tells us is that the, the growth has been regular. Regular where? On the scale. Right? It's not regular. It's, it's still regular, but it doesn't look like the same change. Right? Like a straight line means... Equal changes, equal changes. So equal changes in scale. So when he went from one to ten dollars, when he went from ten to hundred, when he went from hundred to a thousand, a thousand to ten thousand. So every time he changed by a factor of ten, he did it in the same way. And what it means? Well, when he was a little baby, there were things happening there, right? Where were a few enthusiasts, you know, a few thousand people, a few million people, you know, a few ten, tens of thousands probably when it was only a few dollars, right? They were really involved in Bitcoin. Maybe when news started to talk about Bitcoin. So there were different events. They were proportional to where Bitcoin was at the time. And then, you know, the, the large institution will not have taught, taught, uh, touched Bitcoin with 10 feet pole, you know, because they were all thinking it was a scam, this and this other, you know. They were not for sure talking about ETFs or investing in ETF. Maybe somebody say, oh, maybe we should do an ETF, but it didn't happen for sure at that time, right? And because it was proportional to where Bitcoin was in its history. And then when it went to the next scale, everything was the same, 
but proportional, right? A factor of 10, so bigger things, bigger events, and so on. It's the same philosophy here. So basically, the ETF was the right thing at the right time. It's not going to be like this incredible different type of event. It looks incredible because you're thinking in linear terms. And it's very difficult for people to think in these kind of log scale terms, you know, because we don't think in that way. We need to use math and physics, you know, but math and physics help us to think in that way. And so the way to think, the correct way, and again, it's science. So you make an hypothesis. I could be wrong. I could be right. But if I am right in thinking in this way, it's basically just what was needed for Bitcoin to go to the next level. So if the next level for us is got, you know, for right now we are 50,000, we want to go to the next factor of 10, so 500,000, then 5 million, etc. We need events that are proportional to where we are in the history. And right now, ATF is exactly what we need to go to the next level. It's going to take longer because that is the other component of this story about the power law. If it took, if it took uh, let's say, 100 days to go from one to ten dollars it took a factor of 10 longer to go from 100 to a thousand so it took years instead of months it's going to take a decade to go to the next 10 right s to f says no it's going to happen this cycle or maybe next even this theory says no it's going to take a factor of 10 longer and longer and longer okay you know it's less exciting but you know what? It's also more robust. It's more reliable. It's stronger. The system is stronger because power laws are associated with stability, are associated with resisting change, both positive but also negative. So, you know, yes, in one end, we are not, you know, going to do something crazy and go to 500,000. At the same time, we are not going to crash to zero. I prefer a system like that. I don't know you guys. It's like, you know, like a, I say all the time, because everything fits together, right? So, you know, this uh, book, uh, uh, the Bitcoin Standard, we, we have uh, this chapter all about this topic called uh, preference time, right? So different people have different preference time. It makes the example of a little child, you know, that is tested. Do you want the cookie now or to cookie later, right? So this is all about two cookie letters. This is uh, this story is about two cookie letters. It's better to have two cookie letters then I have one now and maybe the system crashes because whenever you have something that uh, uh, it's exponential, it's very unstable. It can crash at any time. Power laws are all about stability. This is, what, this is why life is based on power laws. This is why many natural events are based on power laws because it's something that comes from the system when the system creates some kind of self-sustaining process. So this is all about bootstrapping and self-sustaining, and this is exactly when you see power laws because they are a, 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 an effect of this, uh, it, we call it multiplicative process, two things interacting in, in a non-linear fashion instead of linear, right? So instead of adding, you multiply. And so basically me interacting with you right, right now, you know, we are interacting, we are part of the network because this is also, you know, it's not just of a machine running the code, remining. It's also people talking about the coin, diff diffusing the idea, making videos. This interaction is non linear because uh, even if there are 10 of you here, you're going to tell other 10 people and other 10 people. So it's all a non linear process. And that is what is behind the coin. And when you have these kind of processes, they show up in power laws. Like, this is why cities behave like power laws. They are human phenomena, but because of interactions, the type of interaction, they produce power laws. Same thing with Bitcoin. So, you know, I, I think my model is more truth, first of all, because usually when you have beauty, you have also truth. This is another thing that's tough in physics. I think it's more beautiful, it's more meaningful, it's more stable. So in the end, you know, we will have we will need more data to see which model is really doing what it's supposed to do. You know, the reality always mean. You know, I cannot. It's not philosophy. I can philosophize all day long, and then the data shows I'm wrong. Right? Yes, data is right. I am a scientist. I try to be also a philosopher, but scientist comes first. So, you know, whatever Bitcoin is going to do, but right now, 
my my girlfriend is singing and I'm looking for me just a second. I'm going to take me, Micha. I have a phone call. I have a video. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. No problem. Okay. She was like singing and being all happy about coming to see me. We usually do this thing. So sorry for that. Um, she came back from work. Um, so um, anyway, yeah. So let's see. But you know, I think this is not S two F. I think it's a better model not because I have made it because Bitcoin is telling us something. And I'm just a witness here, right? Like you are, you are. If we are right, and all these make more sense, it's like a puzzle we are putting together. There is a story behind. There is meaning behind. It gives us like an entire philosophy on how to understand Bitcoin. This is why I like it. I think it's incredible. You know. So I hope I answer your question. All right. Can you check it to see if Ash Radio is coming out? Yeah, it does. It does. It was actually one of the first things I checked. And you know what it does? Even there, it's really cool because so price and time are related by this number that is close to six. So even if uh, people think, okay, it's slowing down, remember, it's basically price to time, measuring days, to the six. Six is a big number, right? Think about a parabola, right? When you say, oh, the price went parabolic. Do you know what is the, uh, first of all, a parabola is also power law because anytime you have something raised to the power, you have a power law, right? So it's a power law with the power of two, right? Because everybody knows, unless you have like, you f completely flunk math, <laughs> right? X squared, right? Like Y equal X squared. That is what a parabola is. Well, Bitcoin is Y equal X six. So it's called a super parabola. So it's super parabolic, right? So even if it looks like it's slowing down, it's slowing down relatively to an exponential that is even faster, but it's still going up, right? It's crazy. So it's six. So that means every time you wait longer, the reward that you get, it's to the power of six. It's crazy, you know? So long, longer you wait. I think I did a calculation if you started from the beginning, because it also depends where you come in. But let's say, imagine you invested from the beginning to make it simple. When you waited two times, it's not going to be two times a reward. It's going to be two times to the power of six. That is, if I remember well, it's 64. You understand? Then three times is 720. So it's not linear. You are waiting a little bit longer and you get a huge big reward. Again, the cookie story. So it's not too cookie. It's too cookie to the powers of, you know, six. That is incredible, right? But hash rate, hash rate is about efficiency of a network, right? So we want to make it as efficient as possible. So we... We are using energy because energy is basically our trade-off. We are using energy to kind of give some kind of physical value to the network, right? Because we want, when they say it's not backed by anything. No, it's backed by hundreds of machines that are using electricity to basically almost like arbitrage, right? You're, you're using dollars to transform it into energy. Then energy goes into Bitcoin. So it's all this. Is back up by physics. This is why sellers all the time say that. This is what it means. There is a real physics in the system. It's not immaterial. It's not people imagining things. There is a real physical value in that energy. Now, that energy, though, you want to make it as efficient as possible, right? So you want to have some kind of economy of scale. As you increase the price, you don't want, you know, the hash rate, or oh, as increase, a, yeah, so like a the relationship between price and hash rate needs to be, expressing some kind of efficiency. And is now what is the power? 0 0.5. That is beautiful because it means that if you double the system, you, you don't double the energy consumed. You know, if the price goes up by a factor of two, the energy consumed that back up the system doesn't go by a factor of two up. It goes by the square root because of the power of 0 0.5 is the square root. So it's the square root of two that is much less than two. So there is an efficiency of scale. That is very similar to the metabolism because I made a post online where I was uh, talking about the met there is the same chart where you have mass of the animal and how much energy the animal consume. You know what? It's a power law, first of all. And the power shows an economy of scale. That is the number, the power is less than one. In that case, it's three over four. 
And that means as you make the animal bigger, it uses energy more efficiently because of a two times the mass is not two times the energy is two to the three quarter, that is like 1.6 or something like that. So it's less than two. In fact, I made this example. I say, if you go from a mouse to an elephant, it's something like, uh, you know, 100,000 times bigger an elephant than a mouse in terms of mass. But the energy use is only 10,000 times. So basically, there is a, almost like an efficient a factor of 10 in efficiency because of this power law. You see how everything you know, it's so beautiful because from a power law, you learn so many things. So the fact that there is a power law between hash rate and price and the power law is 0 0.5 is very, very, very mean meaningful because it means that somehow the system is efficient in its energy use, something that almost nobody ever discusses. But you see, when you're trying to understand Bitcoin in terms of power laws, because I, I was joking the other day, they say, you know, there are power laws that come out from Bitcoin. I use like a, a bad word, but, you know, there are power laws coming out from Bitcoin everywhere, you know, because it's this network. It's this is another thing, right? Networks show power laws behavior. And the hash rate, I have a graph where I superimpose hash rate, um, hash rate uh, addresses, uh, uh, transactions, uh, and they did even S2F, and all of them, you know, show power loss, power loss, power loss, a different, different um, exponents, different powers, and they all mean something. And, you know, the price, it means instead of having an economy scale, uh, economy of scale, we have an economy of abundance because every time you wait longer, the price goes up by enormous factor because of that six with energy is the other way around. It's efficient. You know, it's amazing. You know, it's amazing. No, nothing by chance. Now, it doesn't, I don't know if, it's not, it's not Fibonacci. So Fibonacci, and I made also post. So please go to my X because, and scroll down because at a certain point, I'm going to put everything in a book so you can read it in a book. So it's not Fibonacci, right? Many people like Fibonacci because, you know, by the way, another Italian fellow, you know, Forza Italia. Uh, but anyway, um, he, he, he added this sequence, right, uh, of numbers. Basically, like you start with a number, then you add the next, and you go to the next. And then it seems like there are many natural patterns. In fact, there are even spirals that uh, are called Fibonacci spirals. And you can look it up online and check, you know, what is the significance of that. So, yes, there are many natural processes that follow a Fibonacci spiral. In fact, in my post that I made, I, had, I found this very nice article that you can read that uh, goes through the details, you know. It becomes, at a certain point, a little too technical. So, you know, most people will get lost. But in the beginning, it simply tells you, look, there are all these type of spirals. And power law spirals is one family of spirals. So there is, there are causes. Fibonacci spirals and power law spirals are related to each other. And maybe more people are more familiar with the Fibonacci spiral because it's something that you find everywhere on the internet, etc. It's one of these popular things that people like. And, and there is truth behind it. But uh, Bitcoin, it's a related spiral. It's called a power law spiral. And it turns out also in natural phenomena, like I was talking about uh, three rings, I was talking about uh, horns, you know, many different processes follow these power law spirals, but it's not the same thing. So it's an, it will be incorrect to see, say, follows of Fibonacci numbers, at least I didn't see any evidence, but it's a similar idea. There are similar regularities in the price of Bitcoin, but in this case, it's a power law spiral. So it's close, but not quite. Uh, can you also apply R and VR? Yeah, we mentioned about other crypto. And at a certain point, what I want to do, I want to make a catalog. So I want to go through all the major cryptos and do the same thing. The main problem is that, uh, uh, you know, with Bitcoin, we went many orders of magnitude, right? We went from being few cents all the way to almost 100,000, right? And so these are, we had enough room to see these, behavior because remember 
Again, it takes some time, but maybe if I repeat, 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 scale, 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 right? We don't care about how we went from one to two. We care how we went from one to 10, how we went from 10 to 100. So we need that change over many order of magnitude to actually make the power law clear. If uh, there is an asset that didn't change many order of magnitude, and most of them didn't because they are new or they got flat or they, you know, they disappeared. We cannot do that power law. And even if we did it, it will not be really valid because it's only over a small range. Uh, like, you know, almost anything looks like a straight line. Like if you take a small little interval of time, you know, like you can always fit with a straight line, almost anything. Uh, in fact, it's, you know, it's the idea behind derivative that you can always take a very complicated curve and approximate it with a small little tangent you know it's what is called the derivative a rate of change so it's like for example i did it with caspa and it looked like it and people made a big deal out of it let's have a different meeting right like i'm going to do this live session regularly and then we can discuss about other crypto and i will make a catalog and see okay this coin is closed uh, this coin is not closed this way uh, number, you know, a little exponent uh, related to this coin. It does follow, it doesn't follow, you know. Uh, maybe it's a way of deciding which shit coin is more shitty than the next one. <laughs> uh, but there are, so far, I'm sticking with Bitcoin in terms of what follows the power law. I didn't see anything, no gold, no SP500, where there is a change over seven order of magnitude that looks like a perfect straight line. Bitcoin is unique. It should not cycle to speed up or slow down at some point. Well, so the rate of change, right? The rate of change of the angle, uh, it's constant, right? Because it's constant time. So when we do these spirals, it's like a the angular change of a time. It's constant. But... The projection, right? So, for example, the sine waves, the speed will change. But this rate, so far, it's basically this straight line. And that, again, if you look at in this log time, being a straight line means consistent, right? So it means uh, regular. In in this log, this lo strange log time. Now, if you think in linear terms, what it looks to a human. It looks like, oh, you know, Bitcoin is not doing as well as it was doing in the beginning. It's doing exactly the same thing in that weird world of scales because of a straight line. Straight line, remember, means regular, consistent, right? But it's the log time. It's not the normal linear time. So in, in nor normal linear time, it looks like it's taking longer and longer to go by a factor of 10 up. So this is why... You don't have that crazy gains with people that you know invested when it was like a dollar because you know they will they were there you know, witnessing this thing where you know it went from one dollar to ten dollar in a few weeks, you know, and then a few months it went to the next level and so on. It took like an, really years to go actually from unders to thousands, right? And then from thousand to ten thousand. And so it looks like slowing down, but it's really not really slowing down because the equation doesn't change. It's a y equal x, you know, time to the six. So it, now, what does it mean? Like that other thing that people criticize, right? Oh, you know, that means that in this time, you know, first of all, they misunderstand because because it's slowing down, you know, in these factors. It's going to take a long time before it gets 10 million. I didn't calculate it yet, but it's going to be, imagine, you know, if it takes 10 years to go to a million, it's going to take even longer, you know, to go to the next stage, 10 millions. So it, it's, let I will do that calculation, but it's probably like in the 50s or something, you know. And by the 50s, this is what I always say. <laughs> you know, that will be the singularity, guys, right? You know, the AI is going to take over. I am a techno optimist so i want to merge with the machine that is my solution to the problem of ai that we are going to become ai i know some people hate it and don't like it but i am one of these crazy transhumanists that i think actually is amazing i want to be a cyborg i, I like you know not the 
dystopian cyborgs of uh, Star Trek. I want to be, you know, like a cool cyborg that explore the galaxies, you know, and goes everywhere and they learn about things, you know, and uh, I want to understand the universe. So I, I, I don't mind to merge with technology, but it's the only solution because eventually we will take over. And, and these are the scales, you know, like, because that is an exponential process. That change in technology is exponential. So there is no even meaning to talk about what is going to happen 50 years from now, you know. And Bitcoin will be part of the process because I think Bitcoin, at a certain point, these AIs will start to trade with themselves. Hey, uh, uh, can you do this for me? Can you calculate this? I give you this Bitcoin, you know, this fraction of Bitcoin because it will be really worth, uh, worth it a lot. Can you do this for me? It will be a way for machine to exchange uh, energy and time and information, you know, and it will be the, how they trade between each other, you know, where we use Bitcoin. And so, you know, let's stick, let's stick to what we can predict that is probably a range, you know, like an equivalent range. So if he did, basically this is what I'm saying, if he did it for 15 years, is it possible that he's going to do for the next five years? Very likely, right? Is it possible that he's going to do it for the next 10 years? Uh, it's stretching it, but let's see, you know? So this is how I would like you to think about this. Uh, and I think it's the correct way of thinking about this, you know. Uh, the key to the lost century of elite scam monopoly, I think, yeah. Okay, why don't we go? Uh, yes, it's uh, it's in, uh, it's uh, available. So let's first of all, I want to show you live. Uh, so if I, let me see if I find the live chart so I can show it to you. So if we can interact with it, uh, give me a second, okay? Be patient. I have this problem where I have too many things open at the same time. My autistic brain. Um, okay, I think it's this one. I think I found it, okay? Okay. Uh, where is it? Yes, here. Okay, great. It's here. So let me, uh, what I will do, I should say switch to this. This is what I was doing the other day, like switch to this. It's not showing that. Um, so what I will do, I will stop sharing and then sharing again, okay? Let me see if, I, if that works. Uh, window, okay. Here, share. All right. Do you guys see the chart? Can you tell me? So you may want to make sure. Yes, no. Can you please type on the chart if you see the chart? Otherwise, I will assume that you see it. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. So this is the live chart, right? Um, so do you see how I created two panels, right? So this is now you don't see all that marking, but uh, we will make the marking, right? We can maybe color code or a trading view is silly. Uh, it's more difficult to do these kind of things, but there are ways of doing. So I will make sure that everything is marked. But you see, uh, look, so we can now scroll, and this is where we are now. You can zoom in. You see, you can go all the way and check what it's doing. And you see how first falling the linear chart. How nice, right? You see this almost like looks some kind of support level, right? This line looks like a support level when. The price went up and there was another support level here. And now this looks almost like kind of a resistance. And also, you know, make these projections to where we are going, where we seems to go for the next. And this is something that you can choose yourself. Um, you know, there is like a way of selecting parameters and basically how, how far you're projecting. So I'm projecting all the way, you know, I don't know many months ahead of time. So you see where it's the price is going, where everything is going. But it look, it's very useful also, you know, to kind of identify these support levels. Like here, you know, see how the price was following the purple and then like these. You know, it's not perfect, but it's much better than just drawing some artificial lines, connecting dots, you know, because it seems that what the price is doing is really following the general direction. When it looks like it's changing and it's going to the next level and then it stays a little bit there. And then going to the next level, you know, so it's very interesting and useful 
um, to look at how well it follows the general price. And then, you know, here is this uh, lower panel, right? So we see the spiral, we see the price represented in, like if it was in a circle, we can tell what time it is. I I'm going to label where it tells the time, right? 6, 6.15, what is the exact time here? But, uh, and you see, right? This, so this is supposed to be, like I said before, this is the change when we are uh, uh, this time that is, uh, what, what did we say? It's uh, 6, right? In the in the chart is when we go from bear to bull, you know, the beginning of the bull market. And this here was the bottom. You see, this is the bottom, right? This You could say, yeah, the bottom is here, but, you know, it's basically the, very close, right? These are the same price, basically, like 16,000, whatever it was at the time. Yeah, 16,557. So if you follow this indicator, it tells you, but you know, and you can anticipate because that is the beauty, right? You can say, well, we are coming close. Let me do some DCA, maybe you know, starting. So if this is three o'clock, starting at you know two fifty, you know, two fifty-five, I'm going to do DCA because this is kind of an ideal time for me because it's supposed to be close to the bottom. So you can do DCA every day with hundred percent of your location, you know, and go all you know all in because you know that this is a good time. We are close to the bottom here, right? So it's really nice because it gives you this, you know, idea of where we are. And then, we, you know, eventually you can tell, like, you know, if you are 15 minutes away from three, this is very good time to do the DCA. And, uh, you know, you should do it all the way, uh, you know, 15 minutes later. You know, this is Bitcoin time. Um, and uh, uh, and then you know maybe it could start to slow down <clears throat> because uh, you know it's still not the ideal place, right? So you can give a weight to <clears throat> different times in the clock, and not doing anything when you are very close to the top because it's much better to wait, save your money when the price is better. So same thing here, you know, we are very close to the top, we reach the top, um, and this indicator tell us where we're close there. Right? Same thing here. This was the transition. Remember what we say, this was nine o'clock. And so this is the transition from, you know, the beginning of a bull market to the frenzy, you know, the crazy, when everything goes crazy, goes very fast. It basically corresponds <clears throat> to when uh, the price goes above this trend line, right? So the two are very basically in the same region. And, uh, and so we can go the other ones, right? Same thing here. This was the transition from, so this was again, six o'clock. Uh, you will get used once you see this chart because uh, it will be natural, you know, but uh, we can put like little labels. Uh, and so this was a transition from the bear market to the beginning of a bull market. This was another bottom. Look at this. It's pretty amazing, right? That was a bottom. Again, you can do the CA, <clears throat> you know, 10 minutes before three. And you do DCA all the way around this cusp, you will get the bottom. You know where, where do you find another indicator like this? It's just unbelievable. Uh, again, top, the top here of the cycle. You know, again anticipating because uh, you can tell you know that we are coming closer and closer to zero o'clock, that we are coming closer to the top. And you say I don't know where the top is. Yeah, yeah, know very very well. You know where where is you're going to find it, it's going to be there, and so on. So, you know, this again, remember what is this? This is of a transition between um, the end of a bear market to the um, bull market, um, and so on and so on, you know? So this is, uh, and you know, this is the previous cycle. This, I think, is the first cycle, right? So this was the top of a um, cycle there, uh, the bottom, and so on. It's less precise as we go to the previous cycles, but still, you know, top, bottom, you know, it's like that. Transition, you know, and so on. <clears throat> so this is when you, the real bull market starts, right? It doesn't always, do, it looks like it doesn't always correspond when we cross. That is another landmark, right? Because uh, remember, this is also adaptive, so it's trying to give different weights, you know, to this large events, you know, trying to kind of follow locally 
what the price is doing. But, you know, so you can use both, right? Maybe it's even frenzier when we go above. Sometimes they are aligned. Sometimes, you know, they're not. But still, you can see, right? There was a change of face there. It was like kind of flat. And after this cusp, it started to go like crazy. So it's really useful and it's amazing how Bitcoin is really following this general pattern. Here, you know, the top is there, but, you know, so like it's like I say, it's a, a, like actually, I think this is like the first uh, peak. And the first peak didn't have anything to do <coughs> with uh, the halving. It probably was some kind of manipulation that we were doing at Mount Gox, or maybe it was you know the first time that the media started to talk about Bitcoin. Some event that uh, created this bubble, but it didn't have anything to do with uh, the halving. This why it's not precise, right? Here is it's not really uh, uh, doing this a uh, very nice job of telling the peak and the bottom because uh, it's valid only after the first cycle. You know, after the first halving, so after this triangle, the triangle are uh, the halvings. So it's a uh, really focus on the understanding the cycles related to the halving that these other events. Uh, so you know, you see, I'm not making it up. It's really giving us a lot of information about the different cycles. We you know we can use this terminology of the time, and so if you use both charts, they give you slightly different type of information. It's really cool. What do you think? Yeah? Cool. Okay. Uh, so how do you get it? Uh, yeah, how do, you, how do you get the indicator? So I'm going to finish to work on this indicator. So please get, so you get the first one, even just joining my Patreon. And uh, my Patreon, it's very simple. I think it's just a scaling variant is what I am called. You can call me scaling barrier. I mean, scaling barrier. I grow and I keep my uh, power law pattern as I grow. So I am scaling variant, is how you say in physics. So if you go, like, where is Patreon? Where is Patreon? The link to Patreon. So basically, and now we have, you know, um, I will put a link on the YouTube video so you can come and revisit and I will add the link. Uh, if you're going to do it, uh, Probably in the comment, you know, I will pin it. So everything will be there, okay? So we don't waste time. I will go on my Patreon, sign up. There are different levels. It's up to you uh, which level you want to choose. Uh, if you are, you know, if you feel like I give value, you know, be generous, do the higher levels. There are added benefits to the higher levels, but even the low level give you access to the first one. That is the most developed. So you get one. You Also, you can come to the um, Discord channel, you become part of the community, we talk there, we have different channels. You, know, it, it, it don't, you don't need me, you know, you can also interact as a group, but in the entire idea of creating a, a community, you can discuss ideas or whatever, anything related to these topics. And I'm also available to help people, you know, assist you. We're going to have other activities, you know, maybe people would like to see how this uh, calculations work on an Excel spreadsheet just so you can follow along. It depends on your level of involvement, you know? So we can do this in the future. It's becoming my job. I think about it, Mia, like, you know, you go to a class uh, at the college and you learn some stupid stuff. And instead, you learn uh, hopefully something that helps you with life, right? It, you know, not just making money, but also understanding different things about the universe and so on. So, you know, if you go to college, you pay college fees. These are much more reasonable than college fees. <coughs> so sign up. I will be there. I will be helping you. But I'm also a member of the community. So, you know, we are all in this uh, together. Uh, and uh, um, you will have a first indicator, right? And uh, there are instructions there on the Discord channel. And if you are clear, DM me. You know, I'm super available with anybody, okay? Um, and I will help you to get it. So, but basically it works in this way. Sign up. Now, I want to say something. When you go on the Patreon, again, I don't know why they made it in this way. If you open the app on your computer instead of the phone, you're going to see something that says membership. I'm, I, I don't I will let them know that is, you know, because a lot of people just use the, they don't use computer, use just phone. On the phone, it doesn't show up. I don't know why. But if you go on the, um, 
on the desktop or laptop, you will see a tab that says membership. So you click the membership and then it gives you the Discord channel. If you get stuck, DM me. I will send you the link, the invite. But I prefer to go through that because I, what it does is also gives you a role according to your membership level. Then when you go to Discord, you will have that role. So it's much easier for you and much, much easier for you. I know you will have to go to a laptop, but hopefully everybody has a laptop or a desktop, right? But I, I, it's not me. It's Patreon. I always set up, it, set up this thing. It's only visible through the desktop. Uh, maybe it's a temporary thing. Maybe they will change. Uh, and then once you are in the Discord, there is a channel that says uh, indicator sign up. So you put your name there. And again, I'm sure there is a more efficient way of doing I need to improve my power law there, you know, <laughs> like I need to have a, a 0 0.5 exponent, you know. Uh, but I'm learning, you know, this is new for me. So I'm sure there is a more efficient way of doing it, but right now we are doing it this way. You put your uh, username. Again, if you never use TradingView, open an account. It's free. And then you're going to have a username. I need your username. You put it there in, in the channel. And then I have it. I see, you know, okay, this guy that was not added yet, so I'm going to add it. And once you add it, it should be instructions. It should be relatively simple. You basically click the link. You add it to your favorites indicator. And then if you go under, and all, you know, you have a like, little picture showing how to find it. And if it is not clear, you know, I can improve explanation. But uh, um, basically, you find it under invite only scripts, right? So there are community scripts, invite only scripts. And then you will see the indicator. And then you can use it and you can interact with it. The way you want to use it, right? It tells again it right now we know where we are relatively to the trend. We have these uh, different levels of support. So you can start to do some DCA. I'm going to come up with some formula, like if you are in the orange line, use this weight. If you are this, you know, we are working out towards all this, but it's still a nice chart to look and it gives you an idea where we are, etc. The second indicator is not yet available. It's a preview. I'm going to make it available because I want also to add a full model. Full model should, should uh, follow much better the peaks, etc. Uh, it's basically the modified, you know, when you see my chart and they see uh, there are like the little bumps, we follow, you know, the peaks, etc. It's basically that. So also that is a spiral. It's kind of a stretch spiral. Uh, but it follows better this, so we can use it to identify the peaks even better. Uh, but I need to add it and do this color coding. So I want to work on this chart, and then I will make it available. Now, please forgive me if I maybe say, okay, get the two only, you know, if you get the second level, like $10, right? So $5 each or something. Uh, I don't think it's crazy, a reasonable uh, thing. You know, I'm working a lot on these things. Uh, so probably it's going to be like that, you know, like if you upgrade and you go from the basic level, you get both indicators or something like that. Uh, it's not going to be a, anything crazy or, you know, I'm absurd. It's just reasonable. Um, does it sound fair? Is that fair? Um, anyway, so give me a few days and I'm going to update. And uh, I pr and later... I want to make it adaptive, like the top chart is, like with this face lock loop. So it's kind of following the given cycle because, you know, some cycles are slightly longer, slightly. So there is this technique where we can actually follow along at the speed of a current cycle. We can make it much more adaptive in this way. Uh, but it, I will update you, right? So if you are on YouTube, if you are on X, and please also do me the favor to, it doesn't cost you anything, this, subscribe, you know, and like this video so, you know, more people come in because it's also a way for me to get support by, you know, having more people looking at, watching these videos and you know, be members of the community and so on. So it doesn't really cost you anything. Please like the video, uh, join as a member of, it, of the YouTube channel, you know, follower. Um, Okay, so this, this is basically how you get the indicators. Get the first one, wait for the second. You know, I don't think it will take me more than a week to, to do about all the updates. Uh, the face look, uh, you know, this is a innovation of following 
precisely the cycle will come later. We can do an update. But I will have for sure the ones that you see here, plus you know the other one that basically is the full model. And I will try to do all the labels of the clock. Plus, I'm going to work on something online with the clock. You know that uh, I'm probably I'm just giving you giving only the Discord people, only the community access to that clock. There is already a chart that is kind of for the general public, but because you are, you know, part of a tribe, you get the clock, right? So then we can say, hey, you know, what time is it on the Bitcoin clock? You know, and uh, we can look at the clock, see where we are. Um, anyway, um, so, okay, Charles has a question. Have you found better backtests yourself by doing BCA based on deviation? Yeah, of course. I have a chart, and again, I'm going to share all these uh, with the um, tribe, with uh, the power law tribe uh, on Discord. I have three charts because with these three charts shows the potential, okay? I don't tell you do this crazy thing, okay? But any percentage of any, or any uh, of the performance of this chart is going to be amazing. So there are three cases. One is, okay, you are a hodler. And you want simply, you know, to order and you want to do some DCA by oddling, you know. And so you put a weight to the different places where you are on the chart. And I have kind of a formula for that. That you can, you know, we'll have an Excel. And when we have the app, it's going to be all automated. But in that case, I don't know what they projected. They say, okay, in 10 years from now, you started with 100,000. Let's say, of course, some people will start with 10, but, you know, you can scale it according to your own investment and you end up with two million dollars right if you do it in this way or three million dollars in three years in, in three years in ten years from now okay then you do it in a more aggressive way where uh, I want to sell a little bit of my bitcoins when I am there on the top because you know I love my bitcoin but you know we, you know in Pinocchio where uh, there is the story, not the American version, but the Italian version, the real version. I don't know if it is in the American version. He go, there are these, you know, the fox and the and the and the cat, right? And they tell him, Oh, you know, there is this place, it's called the field of miracles. You put the big, you know, the big coin, the gold coin, <laughs> because of, you know, this uh, you should read the Italian book, by the way, that is beautiful, you know, it's amazing. Uh, and uh, it's a story. It's uh, like uh, it's supposed to teach children about life. Uh, and uh, the, the cat and the fox that are scammers, right? You know, these scammers that we have a lot in the Bitcoin world. Uh, they say, I hey, put a, this, this amazing field. He got the coins from this uh, master of puppets because he made him cry, you know. And so he gave him, he, the, the master gave him the coins. And so, and then he meet these guys, you know, that are scammers, criminals, basically. And they say, hey, look, you know, they, they tell, he, he, they know that he has the coins. So they say, hey, we can go to this field. You put the coins in the ground. And in the morning, there will be this tree where you get all, you know, it will be full of gold coins, right? And Pinocchio, because he's naive, you know, he, he doesn't know much about life. He believes them, you know, and of course he puts them and, they stole the coins, right? You see, it, even Pinocchio has to do with uh, self custody, and, you know, not your keys, and, you know, not uh, your big coins, right? And, uh, but, you know, this is a way of multiplying, it's almost like the field of miracles, because again, you're taking the risk of believing the model, right? Because even in this case where we're trying to make a case where Bitcoin is predictor, etc., are we sure 100%? No, you know, because. If it was planets, yes, because you know planets don't start to do random things. It's still an asset, so you know there is some risk. But hopefully, the idea is that given all the evidence that we have, it's a it's a limited risk. It's a you know it's a balanced risk. Uh, it's a calculated risk, more calculated than this. What you know, it's really calculated. So you can say, let's do ten percent. Let ten 20% of my coins and putting in this miracle field and it's going down. And then, you know, I because you liquidate it, you have now this useless cash. But, you know, it's useful because it, when you are rare on the bottom, 
and now you're buying back Bitcoin and you multiply your Bitcoin. So I did a calculation, like an extreme case scenario, where you do this at different level of aggression, aggr aggressivity, you know, aggression of your uh, uh, investment style, just to give some, you know, ranges. So if you do it in a very aggressive way, we say, I'm selling all my Bitcoin, that is something that I don't advise at all, but do just a percentage. But if you did it and you sold all your Bitcoin and you did this little game for the next 10 years, 100,000 became $16 million, $16 million. And if you do something even crazier, that is actually when it goes down, you short, because in America, unfortunately, you cannot do it. But if you are in Europe, you can actually short. Again, some people say, you're crazy. You're telling people to short. Do it with a small percentage. But again, just to show the range of possibility, I say, OK, if you what if you short it? If you short, then it's 32 million. You know, just to give you an idea of what is possible. You know, so any fraction of these, because you're doing, you're going to do it in a more conservative way, more careful way, it can still multiply your Bitcoin by a, by a lot, you know. So, um, yeah, this is what you can do with this chart. One, one of the things. Yeah, all models are wrong, but some are useful. I think this is very useful. It's interesting. It gives a lot of information. It not necessarily represents 100% what Bitcoin is going to do, but I think we crack it, you know, like, let's see if it does, because if it does, it will be like amazing, you know, that we can predict so much about Bitcoin behavior ahead of time, you know, it's all about prediction. It's, there is nothing reactive, you know, it's not like, other, you know, uh, lagging indicator. It's all about understanding what Bitcoin is really doing, you know. So what are your thoughts on both timing and the peak price of a coming cycle? So then, and we can try to, let, let me see if we can extend the prediction all the way to the next peak. I don't think it's possible with trading view because it's kind of limited. You know, I do that in my other charts or, uh, on my X account, etc. But uh, on trading view, we'll, you can project like I do here, but I think a few weeks, a month. Uh, and the next peak is going to be almost two years from now because it's going to be in December. A can so uh, it's going to be in December uh, of uh, 2025, according to the model. And uh, if uh, everything is correct, it should be 210. This is what it should be. And then we go down all the way to 60. So you can see, right? Imagine you sell a portion of your Bitcoin. And or you wait, you know, if you really don't want to sell with Bitcoin and then we go all the way to 60, you know, you could make a lot of money doing that. So I, I'm not going to tell you do this or do this other, I'm just giving you some possibilities and then you decide according to where you are. If you are a, a young person and you have a, just a small little Bitcoin and you want to take some risk, like some calculated risk, I think a, a more aggressive approach is recommended. If you have like a ton of Bitcoin, you know, you want to be very conservative, but, you know, it depends on you. I don't know your situation, so I'm not going to advise you according to your situation. I'm just giving you the spectrum of possibility and then you you be a big boy or girl and do whatever you think is correct to do, you know, and just giving you the information. Okay. Um, it's, uh, I think we went for quite a bit. Uh, we, it's almost two hours, so, you know, it was great and I love uh, interaction with you guys. Um, do you have any other questions? I think everything else is clear, no? Uh, so I will I will link the Patreon. Really, that is where you want to start. Go to the Patreon. Probably you have already my X, otherwise I will put also my X account. So X account, Patreon, go to Patreon. Um, join the community and then come to the discord channel write down your name get the indicator and then um you know sometimes we can have even a live chat where uh, everybody opens you know the indicator and plays with it and you ask me question while we you play with it but i think as an introduction this is good you can watch the video later too and go back to some of the things we discuss but uh, we can do more interactive things next time, okay? This is just an introduction to all this.
Okay, guys. So, ciao, ciao. I will uh, see you next time. Uh, and uh, let's let's look at the clock. See what time is it. You know, it's and keep a bit eyes on the final goal. You know, hopefully we get out of the system or the matrix. Ciao, grazie. Ciao.